Hello guys, I'm Paul McWhorter and I am here today with lesson number nine on using Python with the Arduino. And hopefully you've been with us through the first eight lessons. But what we're working on, we're working on this scheme where we're using the Arduino to work with sensors and circuits and take data. We're streaming that data over to Python, we're reading it in, and then we're using the power of Python to do cool things. We've created 3D virtual world and 3D visuals and graphics using vPython, and that was cool, but what we're really interested in now is creating graphs and charts of live data streaming from the Arduino and then in Python having those charts update in real time. In the last couple of lessons what we've done is we've downloaded and worked with Matplotlib which is a plotting library with Python and we've sort of gotten comfortable with that and so now what we need to do is we need to create some interesting data to stream from the Arduino over to Python so that we can graph it live. So what we're going to do today is we're going to get a circuit set up and a program set up to start streaming that data and then in tomorrow's lesson what we'll do is we'll in Python be reading that in and creating the graphs. A little bit too much to try to do it all in one lesson so we are breaking it into two days. The sensor we are going to be using is the most excellent BMP-180 pressure sensor from Adafruit. It measures very accurately pressure and temperature and it's an affordable sensor as well. So uh, what we can do is to follow along with me <coughs> What you can do is you can go to my website, www.toptechboy.com, come to Using Python with Arduino, and then we are on lesson number nine, and you click there, and then you are right where I am. The first thing you need to do is to get the sensor hooked up. It is very easy to hook up with four wires, and so it's very simple. You take the VN from the pressure sensor, and you go to 5 volts on the Arduino. This is the BMP-180, the BMP-180. VN to 5 volts. Ground from the pressure sensor to ground on the Arduino. The next pin is SCL, SCL on the 180 to pin A5. That's the analog in pin 5, A5 on the Arduino, and SDA to A4. You hook those wires up, those four wires up, you're just about ready to go. Okay. The good news is, is that this sensor is very easy to work with because Adafruit has done the heavy lifting for you, and they have created a library that makes it so simple to operate with their sensor. Good job, Adafruit. So we need to download the library. <coughs> to download the library, hopefully you are following along with me on this web page. Then you want to you can just click on this link if you are at my website, or you can go to https slash slash learn.adafruit.com slash bmp085 slash using dash the dash bmp085. When you click there, you go to the Adafruit website, and what you want to do is at download the Adafruit BMP085. Uh, Arduino library. Don't worry that this is an earlier model of the sensor. We are using the BMP-180, but we use the library for the BMP-085. The software is the same, the library is the same, so don't get concerned that this doesn't match your new and dandy BMP-180. <clears throat> what you will do is you will click on this. Also notice I am using the version 1. Adafruit has a new version 2 of the library. I don't like it very much. I like Adafruit, sorry, love you guys, but I like your version 1 a, uh, API much better. It's just much simpler to work with this sensor. So we're going to download API version 1. You click on that and it comes down if you're using Google Chrome and it downloads here. If you're using a different browser, you will have to go find this in your download folder. All right, notice that it downloads it as a zip folder. You got to get the stuff out of that zip folder. So what you do is you click on the zip folder. The zip folder opens up. The folder you want is inside there and then you drag and you drop that folder to your desktop. Okay. This is the folder that we want to work with. Now what you want to do is you want to rename this folder something a little better. So we're going to rename this folder Adafruit okay, BMP180, and that tells me that I can use this library with my uh, BMP180 sensor. What we have to do now is we have to get this folder 
into our Arduino environment so the Arduino can find it. And the way you do that is you've got to kind of find out where your Arduino is installed. And so what you can do is you can open up your Arduino integrated development environment and then you go to file and look at your preferences. Okay. And what you can see is, is that my sketchbook where my stuff is installed is C, Users, Paul M, Documents, Arduino. If you've installed your software recently, it should look something like this. Okay, so we got to browse to that folder. And so what we do is I'm going to go to the computer and then I go to C. And then the next thing is it tells me to go to users. And so I'll go to users. And you do what yours says here. I'm just sort of showing you as an example, but whatever yours says, you go to that folder. Okay, and then it's my name, Paul M. So I go to there and then I go to documents. It might show up in yours as my documents or documents. They're both equivalent to each other. So we go to documents and then there should be a folder Arduino. I go, go there. There's my library folder. That's where I need to put this. I need to take this and I need to drop it in my libraries folder. Now I'm going to open it up and there it is. Okay. Now I'm going to tell you something very, very, very important. <laughs> if you just try to go load that library, it's not going to find it. Okay, You have to kill your Arduino environment. And you have to reopen the Arduino environment because when it's opening, while it's sitting there thinking, what it's doing is it's going out and seeing what the libraries are. Now that we did that, it should find that library. So if I come up here and say open and I look under libraries, there's my Adafruit BMP 180 that we just loaded up. Okay, boom, there it is. Why is it there? Because I killed Arduino and I opened it up again, therefore it could find it. So let's start writing some code. This little guy is incredibly easy to, uh, <coughs> to use. It does use the wire library, and so we haven't talked a lot about that, but we do need to include the uh, capital wire capital wire dot h library like that okay and this wire library comes installed with your Arduino so you don't have to download anything there you should already have that but this m imports the wire library all right now we also need to get our Adafruit library. So include, okay, and this we go not what we named the folder, but the name of the library in the folder, which was Adafruit, A D A F R U I T, capital A, underscore B M P O 85.h. Do not worry that this is that old name because it is the same library, okay import the pressure sensor library. Okay. Why don't we go ahead and make this where we can act don't do that. Why don't we make this where we can actually read it? Like that. All right. Okay. So now we've included the two libraries that we need. Now we've got to create a sensor object. Okay, we've loaded the library, but we need to create a sensor object. So we got to give it the library name at a fruit BMP 085. Okay, and then I got to create the object. I'm going to call it my sensor. I could call it whatever I want, but I'm going to name this object my sensor. Let's see. So I'm going to create a pressure sensor called my sensor. I named it my sensor. You could name it something different if you wanted. Now we need to declare our variable. So I'm going to go float. What am I going to be reading off of this? When you read off of this sensor, it reads in degrees C. You can read the temperature. So I'm going to read temp and C. Okay, because we're going to be reading temperature and pressure. So this is the variable to hold the temperature reading and C. And then we're going to convert it to F because I like to work in F. So we're going to need a variable temp F variable to hold the temp temperature in F. 
And then we're going to need to read the pressure as well. So we're going to say float, and then we're going to have pressure, pressure, like that. Variable to hold the barometric pressure. And it reads it in Pascal, so you should get a really big number. Okay. So now we're going to do the void setup. In the void setup, we always need to turn our serial monitor on. So we're going to go serial.begin, <coughs> open, close, okay. Uh, and we're going to put the baud rate, hmm, let's go 9600. 9600, okay. So start the serial, serial monitor. Okay, and then I need to start my, my sensor. What's my sensor called? It's called, uh, what's my pressure sensor called? I named it my sensor. So I need to start that. So I say my sensor dot begin and then open close <coughs> that initialize my sensor. I think that's all we need to do right now in the void setup. Now in the void loop, <coughs> this is going to be pretty easy. I'm going to make a temperature measurement. So I'm going to say temp C, that's my variable, is equal to how do I make a measurement? Well, I go out to my sensor, my sensor dot read temperature. Look at that. Open, close, bam. And this will read the temperature in degrees C. Now I need to convert that to temp F because I like working in F because that's just the way I roll. I'm going to go temp C times, how do we convert? We times 1.8 plus 32. We'll convert that. And I always like to put points on there to make sure I'm not doing some goofy integer math. And so uh, let me come back like that and then convert temp to F. All right, now let's read the pressure. Pressure is equal to my sensor dot pressure, or my sensor dot read pressure. Type it just the way I type it. Read pressure with a capital P, read temperature with a capital T, that bumpy font that we've been talking about since day one. Okay, this is gonna read the pressure. All right, we've got temperature, we got pressure, we're ready to print. So serial.print, and I'm going to put several things on a line, so I use a print, not a print ln. And I'm going to say the temp, temp is colon space end with a quote like that. <clears throat> okay, and then print your data. That should be enough comments. Serial dot print and now what I'm going to print I want to print the temp F now what do I want to print let them know what I'm printing print and then this is going to be the last thing on the line so I'm going to put a print ln and then I will put the string uh, pascals like that that's the units that we're using the space before that all right and then now I'm going to do a serial, what am I doing? That is, I'm going crazy. That is degrees F. Okay, now I'm going to do serial.print, and I'm going to say the pressure, the, I'm going to say bar barometric pressure is, okay, and serial.print. And I'm going to print the, what did we read it into? Pre the variable pressure. And then I'm going to do serial dot 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 print ln. So I'll end this line. And then we'll put the units, which were in Pascals. That should be good enough. Like that. And then I'm going to print a blank line just to make it a little easier to read. So I'll just print a quote, quote, to print a blank, uh, blank line, but I need to make it a serial print ln <coughs> to print a blank line. I need to get rid of this nonsense here. And now I need to delay it so it's not just sending the data real fast. Let's take a measurement every quarter second. So that would be how many milliseconds? Uh, 
want to delay a quarter of a second would be 250 milliseconds and boom. What are the chances that this is going to work? I'm feeling lucky. Okay, I am feeling lucky. Let's download this thing. Ah! Oh, here, up here, I need the colon, the semicolon. When you include a library, you do not put a colon. When you include a library, you do not put a semicolon. But when you create the object, you have to have the semicolon. Okay, now let's see. Ah, we're running now. We're running now. Okay, this thing is going to work. Let's see if we get good data. So let's look at our serial monitor. All right, look at that. Look at that. Let me slow this down. I'll stop stop the auto scroll. Look at this. Temperature 79.52 degrees and the barometric pressure is 93,442. And so that looks really, really, really good. Okay, so we are getting temperature data and we are getting uh, pressure. Let me see if I put my finger over here, if I can try to heat that up. Look at that, it jumped to 85 degrees because I put my finger on it, 87, and then I take my finger off and it should start cooling back down. Let me uh, give it a little help there. Yeah, it's slowly, uh, it's slowly coming back. Uh, it's slowly coming back down. It'll be back at 79 in no time. And so what we can see is we're making measurements. Now, a lot of times, when you look at the weather sites and so forth, what they do is they report the barometric pressure in inches of mercury. Okay, and if you want to convert this to inches of mercury, what you need to do is you need to take the pressure in pascals and you need to divide it by the magic number 3386.389. And then that will be in inches of Hg, inches of mercury. And when I checked our weather report a little bit earlier, it was about 27 or 28 inches of mercury uh, that the weather station was reporting. And so let me run this and see if our measurement is at all close to that. Sometimes their data is a little bit old, so sometimes it doesn't match exactly. Okay. But look at that, 27 to 28 inches of mercury is the barometric pressure exactly what was reading. So you were looking 15 minutes, we hooked up a sensor, and I think the sensor is like nothing, it's like 10 bucks, and we are measuring pressure and temperature, boom, 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 boom. This has been a great lesson, so we've got this done. Be sure to tune in to our next lesson, which is going to be lesson number 10, where we will stream this over to Python, and then we'll create live graphs of the data. Tune in, lesson 10 tomorrow. Paul McWhorter, you guys subscribe to my channel and check in on this new lesson that will be coming out tomorrow. Talk to you later.